Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to another episode of The Jen Thoden Show, the place to be to learn how to be your most stylish and confident you. This is episode number seven, and it's been a little while. Uh, I took a couple weeks off from recording the video cast and podcast. Um, we were, you know, I was crunching on finishing up the certification course for seasonal color analysis, and actually, I'm still catching up on doing some uh, reviews on the homework. And then I went on vacation with my family to Disney World, and I was gone for about eight days. And oh man, I love, I absolutely love Disney World. I don't know if you've ever been to Orlando to Disney World, but it's one of my favorite places. It wasn't really my favorite place when the kids were little because it wasn't much of a vacation when you're chasing around toddlers. I, mean, I I watch, you know, all the ambitious parents bring their little ones to Disney and watch them all uh, implode by, by noon because they're of exhaustion. And I remember those days. But now my kids are teenagers and it was just, it was just a blast. We stay at the Polynesian, which is beautiful. It's like a Caribbean resort. And uh, we did a lot of nighttime park uh you know touring and man it was just it was just a wonderful time so um so that's where i've been but i'm back so if you've missed me i thank you <laughs> and if you've never watched before well welcome um actually i wasn't going to even record tonight i actually it is tonight if you can tell the lighting's not great uh usually i i record in front of a bright uh, bay window but i had to drive my son around to gymnastics tonight and i just got back so it's kind of late so the lighting's a little strange, but I hope you don't mind. And uh, I wasn't going to even record. I was thinking, oh, what's the big deal? And right when I th- I said that, two emails came in from listeners and followers, you know, offering suggestions for the next podcast and thanking me for the this the episodes that I've done so far. And that was really inspiring and obviously really needed at that moment. So. Instead of putting it off, I am recording it with with happiness, and and I'm so glad that I am. And thank you for emailing me. It's just you know sometimes sometimes you know you know even I need a little nudge every once in a while. So I really really appreciate that. All right, so in this episode, we're going to talk about sister seasons. We're going to style some skirts, and we'll do a seasonal seasonal color analysis, and that will always end with a personal note. Okay, so let's first talk about sister seasons. Sister seasons is something that uh, not a lot of people know about. And, and so what, what happens is, is that uh, I, you know, or you figure out what your season is. And so your, your best colors are in that season. But there's a secondary color palette that you can pick from. And this becomes more ideal when you are someone that can kind of flow back and forth between cool and warm or two different seasons. And and it also expands your options in your closet. So your your season that you've been analyzed to be, that's your best colors, by far the best colors for you. However, as you're using your um, color palette, your color fan to go through your closet and start to, you know, clean out the the excess and the clutter and reducing your wardrobe down to the colors that look best on you, don't throw everything away just yet because there is a secondary palette that you look that you can wear, and I say this because it's not. I don't always think that every color in the secondary palette looks good the best, but I also don't want you to, to waste money throwing away perfectly good clothes when you can wear them. Maybe they're not the best colors, but if you can wear them, you can always pair them up with something from your main co- your main color palette to you know pull you know pull things in. So for example, shaded autumn. Seasons, uh, the sister season to Shaded Autumn is Shaded Winter. They're both uh, seasons that are deep. Autumn is warm and winter is cool. But they actually, um, 
they blend a little bit near the bottom of the color wheel and so they share a lot of the same colors so if you are a um, style club member or if you've purchased the mastery um, the color mastery course uh, look at both shaded autumn and shaded winter and look at the color wheels on both of them and you'll start to actually see how they kind of blend together and that intersection are colors that you can definitely wear and you can kind of tip over into the cool side if you're in autumn and over into the warm side in if you're a winter just a little bit though you know I, I not every color in the secondary palette is going to look good on you but it will expand your options and help you make some smart decisions if, without you know throwing away something really expensive in your closet so if you're wondering what your sister season is I made it I made a very quick cheat sheet out on the blog I will post that link in the description below this video so that you can click on it just go straight to it it's just text and it just shows you which season you, you know your mate with if you're one season what the secondary season the sister season is and so you can have both and take a look at that and if you have any questions about that just let me know okay all right um as always if you have questions that you would like me to answer on the podcast and video cast please submit them to style club at outfit ideas for you.com that's the number four you.com and i love to answer questions on the episode so please send those to me okay are you ready let's style something as always if you have a style question that you would like to have answered on the video cast send it to style club at outfit ideas for you.com okay so this actually comes from a style club member she's been asking me for quite a while to be honest with you what colors go well with these skirts and i've uh, waited long enough and i need to um, help her out so these these skirts um they have the animal print and for the people who are listening and not necessarily watching the colors are very warm uh, they've got a lot of earth like camels grays blacks they're like a giraffe pattern on one and I don't know maybe another giraffe pattern but it's just a bigger print on the other with a black waistband so there's black grays taupes looks like camels and creams in here now what's interesting about her request because it's if you were a warm season I would say well that's easy just uh, wear camel or cream or beige warm beige uh, charcoal gray black and you'll look great you don't need to worry about really just wear it with neutrals and, and you know pair it with some black leggings and boots and you're done but this particular uh, follower and, and club member is a toned summer so she has these skirts that are very warm and and she wants to know what colors from her color palette will look good with these so here's the thing because these are so warm uh it's not going to look great with a tone with, with everything in this tone summer uh color palette because it the the combination is a little off so what i would recommend is i would reach for the richer tones that have warmth in them and those sh should work really well so for example I pulled some out here for you the the blue red uh, blue red sweater or blouse uh, would be very interesting there is a rose brown that when I'm looking at it again may not be the best choice I actually prefer the chocolate brown instead that would that would work really well uh, when, when you're choosing the brown as someone who's a summer or a cool undertone stay away from the golden browns you're really looking more for a very neutral brown okay you also have cool gray in your color palette um, and cool gray will be perfect so I know you were asking for a color but um, because you are so cool and soft it might be best to stick with a nice cool neutral to be able to pull these off really well a true red would be very interesting with these uh, nothing that's too orange just a very true red looks great on um, a soft summer it is a little bit bold but I think it actually will look really really cute with these skirts and I think that's probably your best choice in my opinion you also can wear soft white 
I know it's not exciting, but you certainly can do that. And of course, black. Uh, black is a little bit harsh on a, on a tone summer, but can definitely be done if that's just the look you're going for. Now, when I look back over here on the color palettes, um, the other color that I think would look really great with this with these skirts would be like the blue green down here or even teal those two colors also would look really really nice with these colors and 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 really i think it's because teal in general uh, blue greens they're very common across most seasons and so it's it's a good color to choose when you have to kind of bridge the gap between a cool and warm color palette set so the skirts are kind of warm if you have a cool um clear cool season uh, try first the you know your your neutrals that will go well with it and if you really want some color i would recommend trying the blue greens and teals those are always a great go-to and then on, and then the next option would be to choose a true red um something it's a very you know very pure red not orange and not too blue and that will actually be very very striking so i hope that helps I'll give you some ideas of what you can do for th with that skirt okay all right so let's talk about the seasonal color analysis we have here bonnie and um i love the photos that she sent me because the lighting was really good on these and that always helps with um doing an analysis of someone if when the color is and the quality of the photo is pretty good it doesn't have to be a professional quality photo it just needs to be in focus it needs to be from the um, uh, shoulders up and in some pretty good light and she did a really great job with this and she also sent me a bunch of different colors and tops and so the very fact that she looks so good in this um kind of a coral red coral you know in coral red coral pink color it tells me right away that she's warm so that was really really easy because of if she was cool this would the shirt would not look good on her she would not look bright and um, in fact if you look at her you can see that she's wearing a very pink lipstick and and i don't actually think that's the right lipstick for her i would actually warm it up a little bit okay i did find and then she did send me a close-up of her eyes and then you can see that her eyes are warm they're kind of um they're kind of soft they're so not really very clear in any particular color I do think they're still very warm but they're very soft and so when we think about which what we've talked about so far her dominant traits she clearly has warm undertones her eyes are warm and they're soft and they're light she has natural blonde hair she told me so and so the, ultimately she's warm and light so she's a spring and in my opinion there's really no other spring that she could be except for a toned spring which is also known as a soft spring now and if you want to go by process of elimination she's light and warm so i know that she's a spring she's not a clear spring a clear springs have very bright brilliant brilliant eyes and they're very high contrast about them she doesn't have that she's not a shaded spring either which is a very warm spring someone that has strawberry hair very warm skin and eyes in fact i did drape her in um some of the shaded spring colors but they were just really too heavy on her um, shaded spring can wear can almost be an autumn in many ways they can wear some really rich colors and that just didn't work and she's not a light spring and she's not a light spring because her eyes are this uh almost autumn they're they're kind of hazily but autumn was too heavy on her she could because this this analysis she could easily also kind of fit into a tinted autumn tone springs and tinted autumns are extremely similar and the only difference really is that a, t a tinted autumn might be a little bit deeper and earthier so i chose spring and i evaluated her as tone spring and so i put her in the palette to to give her with several options and you can see she fits right in and this is a very big uh key for me like once i've um, and analyze the, the person's photos and I've done some virtual draping and if you if you do decide to um, order a, a personal seasonal color analysis from me it is a fee-based service and uh, you'll discover that I go through there's a very detailed um, virtual draping that you receive 
that's showing you if you're, if you're warm or cool, and I break it down from there. And so by the time you see these images here, I've already spent a couple hours doing some very detailed study, okay? So um, this is the very last step. This is what I'm pretty sure I know what the season is. And so, and if, so what I do is I put this person onto the color palette, and it's usually the person just sort of kind of fits right in. I know I'm wrong when I do this and they, and they, it doesn't look right. Like they just kind of pop out of it almost. And so I go back and I do a little bit more study sometimes. Sometimes it's the photo and the photo is not very good and I have to work with that also. But you can see that she looks really great in Tone Spring. And I did a really fun uh, turquoise on her um, because she already sent me uh, coral pink, you know, like a orangey red and that looked really great on her. So um, there you go. She is a toned spring. If you are interested and want more information, you can actually visit the blog at outfitideasforyou.com. At the top of the page under style services, you can you can click on seasonal color analysis and it will give you the information on signing up for an analysis. And here, this is the thing. If you are at a point where you really don't know what your season is and you're still kind of guessing, it's not worth it. And it's absolutely worth the investment in yourself to actually get the analysis done because once you know what your season is, everything opens up and you can start to actually spend less money because you can have really great looking clothes in the right colors and get rid of all the other noise. Clothes that just don't look right on you but you keep holding on to them. You know, it's like that less is more mentality. So it's just something to, to consider. If you have questions, by all means, send me an email at styleclub at outfitideasforyou.com. Just between you and me, stop apologizing. Now, I don't mean to be cold-hearted and, you know, never apologize for, for something that you might have done wrong, but I have noticed that many women in particular, maybe men too, but I don't know, I, don't, I always seem to see it mostly in women, or maybe that it just bothers me more when I see it in women, that we have a tendency to apologize all the time. And either you're like this, or you, I'm sure you can think of at least one person that's always saying, I'm sorry. And not really necessarily for anything they've done wrong. They, they're apologizing maybe for something that the other person did. You know, they, they spill their drink and the other person goes, oh, I'm sorry. Why? What, what in the world are you sorry for? And what's, it, what I've learned is when you've done something wrong, of course, take accountability for it, own it, and, and, and do the best you can to make it right. But for the most part, apologizing is really more self-fulfilling and not necessarily solving any other problem than trying to make yourself feel better. Um, it's a self-esteem uh, measure almost. If you notice yourself saying, I'm sorry, a lot, Take note, because most of the time, there's nothing to be apologizing for. In fact, every time that you say, I'm sorry, you lose a little bit of your power. And I think it's time that we take that back, which means that don't apologize for things that you have no control over. You can't apologize for being stuck in traffic. Well, why? Why would you, why would you say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm late, I was stuck in traffic? No, just, I'm late, I was stuck in traffic. But there's no need to apologize. The only time that you might need to apologize is if you really feel that um, you need to let the other person know that you're being accountable for something you've done wrong and that you need to make it right. But I would, get, I would bet you that 90% of the time that you hear yourself saying, I'm sorry, there's really nothing to be sorry for. And there's, it's a difference between um, offering sympathy. If you want to tell someone, well, I'm, I'm really sorry that that happened to you, that's different. But just saying I'm sorry for, for really no reason at all, it might even be a reflex. Start taking note, because every time you say that, you actually take away a little bit of your power that when you, when you start to self-check and to 
decide that you're not going to do that anymore, it feels really good. At first, it feels a little strange because you're in habit. You're in habit of always saying, "I'm sorry," I, you know. I'll, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, sorry the kids are being so loud. I'm sorry, you know, the dinner is late. I'm sorry, I, you know, something spills. Oh, I'm sorry. It, and it, but there's no, re- there's no reason for it. It just, the, the situation is what it is most of the time. And you don't have control over whatever is going on. People react certain ways, things happen, accidents happen, there's traffic, there's weather, there's a lot of things that you have zero control over. And so there's absolutely no reason for you to be apologizing for it. There's not. And so it's time to take some of that power back and be okay with the fact that some things are going to go wrong. And there's absolutely no reason to say you're sorry for it. None. Um, when somebody asks you if you want to, you know, go out to, to dinner, and maybe with a friend or um, it's a date or a proposal or whatever it is, and you don't want to, just say, thank you. But I'm actually just, if you don't want to, right? Thank you. But I, I actually just kind of wish, would rather just stay home tonight. Don't say, I'm sorry. I just don't really want to, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. There's no need. You don't need to do that. Why would you say you're sorry? Sorry for what? Because they might not be thrilled that you're staying home and not going out with them. That's their problem. Not your problem, right? So, you know, it's okay to say no. It's okay to not even give a reason. Why? Just no thank you. It's amazing how uncomfortable this will be at first, especially if you're in the habit of always trying to explain yourself and always trying to and always saying you're sorry. And there's there is an elegance and a power in less words and allowing the silence. The person who controls the conversation is the person that doesn't actually speak and allows the silence. And silence is really uncomfortable for a lot of people. And you start to fill it. So play with the idea of answering someone, responding to someone with an honest, you know, with an honest, genuine response without saying, I'm sorry, and without explanation. And at first it will be very uncomfortable, but as you practice it, you're going to just, you're going to start to discover there's a whole new level of strength inside of you that you didn't even know was there. And it's, and, it, and it's a little bit of a game with yourself. And as long as you kind of are aware of your normal response and just kind of tell yourself, I don't need to explain. I don't need to apologize. So, you know, no thank you. No, thanks. I just don't like that. That's it. So try it. Stop apologizing, take your power back, be strong, be beautiful. If you like this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because there will be more. Um, Also, visit the blog and subscribe to the newsletter. You get a lot of really great content once a week with outfit ideas for your season, seasonal color analysis, and all kinds of information on the Style Club and other courses that I release on a regular basis. The newsletter is really, really great. Just visit the site. There'll be a form right there. You can subscribe. So I would love it if you do that. And just visit and check things out. There's a lot that's, there's a lot of content on there. And it's a lot of fun. So if you haven't visited the blog, please do. Outfit Ideas, the number four, YOU.com. And, um, you know, stop by, subscribe, and send me a note and say hi. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. You Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in another episode.